Crucial is aiming their brand new P310 2230-sized M.2 NVMe SSD squarely at the handheld game console market. Things like the Steam Deck and the RG Ally, amongst the myriad of other options that are now on the market. This might just be the perfect drive for them, and in this video I'll explain why, we'll test it out to see how good it really is, and by the end of it you should know if this tiny little thing is for you. Let's jump straight in with a look at the practically microscopic drive. Physically, the P310 measures in at 22mm wide by 30mm long, hence the 2230 designation. Importantly for devices like the Steam Deck though, it's single-sided, something that not all 2230 drives offer. That does mean that you don't have much space on here for things like a DRAM cache. What you do get is a Fizen E27 controller and one package of Micron's 232L, which I think means layer, 3D NAND flash. That is either a 1TB or a 2TB package, which I find really impressive that they can fit 2TB of storage into a single NAND flash package. As an aside, one of the features the Crucial lists for this drive is RAIN, Redundant Array of Independent NAND. That is exactly what you think it is, just like RAID for hard drives, but in NAND. Basically, the drive makes parity calculations on your data, and potentially duplicates some of it, to ensure that even if part of the NAND flash dies, you won't lose any data. What's more impressive is that this doesn't result in any less usable space for you. Both this drive and most of the other 2TB SSDs that I have all report 1.81TB of usable space in Windows. That's really cool, and that's on top of ECC support too. As for speeds, Crucial claims this will hit 7.1GB per second on reads and 6GB per second on writes putting it up there with some of the fastest Gen 4x4 drives, and even lists an impressive 440 terabytes written endurance rating for this 2 terabyte drive, or half that for the 1 terabyte, to complement the 5 year warranty. Of course, at least on the speed front, what manufacturers claim is always the absolute best case numbers, so let's take a look at how it performs, both in synthetic benchmarks like ASSSD, ATTO Disk Benchmark, and Crystal Disk Mark, and in a more real-world file transfer and duplication test. Starting with the synthetics, Crystal Disk Mark reckons you'll get 6.77 gigabytes per second of reads, and actually better than advertised 6.3 gigabytes per second in writes, at least on sequential transfers with a queue depth of 8. At Q1 isn't quite as good, down at 3.6GB per second reads and 5.5GB per second for writes, and as always the random 4KB blocks, even at higher Q depths, are lower again at 800MB per second read and 560MB per second for writes. Compare that to other Gen 4x4 drives, that's pretty much on point. It's actually faster than the Solidine P44 Pro, and thoroughly trounces the drive that I use in my Steam Deck, the Kyoxia BG4. I think what's most impressive here is at least the lack of the DRAM cache. It doesn't seem to be bothered, as it offers solid Gen 4x4 performance regardless. That's really cool. ASSSD has the P310 in the upper pack, again matching some of the full fat, full speed Gen 4x4 drives like the Sab Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus G, despite the P310's diminutive size. What's more impressive here is the 4K random, where the P310 is the single fastest drive I've tested in both reads and writes, and especially on the writes front, not by a small margin, over 50 megabytes per second faster than the next fastest, and reads are well, at least a couple megabytes per second faster too. That is incredibly impressive, especially from such a small drive. Whatever black magic uh, Crucial and Micron have in here, you should want it. And lastly for the synthetics, ATTO Disk Benchmark. 
This, again, shows the P310 to be in the upper echelons of Gen 4x4 drives, holding its own above the Solidine P44 Pro and miles above the Kyoxia BG4. Admittedly, that is a Gen 3 drive, and actually impressive in its own right being a single chip design, as in NAND and controller in one chip, but, oh, it, you know, it's still on the slower side. And of course, thoroughly trouncing the Samsung 970 EVO Plus, and while not included here, the 990 Pro 2. It even offers pack leading performance at 32KB and 64KB block sizes, especially on reads. On the more real world fronts, I like to do a file duplication stress test, duplicating a large data set of files to stress reads and writes simultaneously, and I keep doing that until the SLC cache runs out to see what the revert speed is. The P310 again did chart-topping performance here, running at a very consistent 2.3 gigabytes per second or so. For context, the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus G peaked at 2.19 gigabytes per second, but bounced around more like 2 gigabytes per second. So the P310 running at a very stable 2.3 gigabytes per second on average is incredible. Hell, it peaked at around 3 gigabytes per second, which again is phenomenal performance for any drive, let alone one this small. As for when the SLC cache ran out, that was after around 350 gigabytes of data, all at once, mind you, with a revert rate anywhere between 500 megabytes per second and 200 megabytes per second, depending on the file size being transferred. That's pretty typical for essentially bare NAND transfers, and again, that only really happens when you're transferring hundreds of gigabytes of data at a time, unlike Samsung drives, which can often be more like tens of gigabytes. All in all, on the performance front anyway, the P310 is an exceptional drive, and not just for its size class. This is about as good as a Gen 4x4 drive gets, full stop. The fact that you can get that sort of performance in a 2230 form factor with no visible DRAM cache anyway is just incredible. As for pricing, Crucial has listed the 2TB version at $215 and the 1TB version at $115, which is decently in line with the other 2230 drives on the market, at least when they're not on sale. And seeing as this fits perfectly in a Steam Deck or RG Ally, if you are after a new drive for that sort of handheld, well, I can definitely recommend the P310. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find my iFixit kit and uh, get into my Steam Deck here. Now, of course, those are my thoughts, but um, I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the P310? Is this a drive for you? Is it, you know, your next Steam Deck or RG Ally drive, or is there something else you'd prefer instead? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll also leave a link to this in the description if you are interested in it, and if you want to check out the rest of the SSD reviews that I've done, check them out on the end cards. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon, and if you want to test your own hardware, not quite like SSDs, but things like monitors, keyboards, mice, and peripherals in general, I make my own hardware, uh, the open source latency testing tool, and the open source response time tool, and those are available at osrtt.com, they are linked in the description as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.